Hey guys, welcome back to the 37th episode of the Huggy Poker Vlog. I'm Huggy, and for this episode, I'm looking to head back to the lodge in Round Rock, Texas to play some 1 3 No Limit Match the Stack. I've got $2,000 in my pocket, looking for a long session, hopefully a good one, and I don't want to spoil anything, so let's get into the action. <laughs> We get seated at a 1-2 table while waiting for a seat at the 1-3 game. It takes about 25 minutes before we get anything playable. That's when we pick up pocket jacks on the button. There's one early position limp and everyone else folds to the hijack who makes it $10. The cutoff folds and a 3-bet to 35 in position. The limper cold calls and the original razor folds. The flop comes down 8-king-8 eight eight rainbow. It checks to us and I should probably bet here to be honest, but at the time I can't recall why I decided to check back. The turn brings the seven of diamonds and our opponent checks to us again and given his passive line I'm happy to make a delayed C bet now for $30. He folds and we take it down. Ten minutes later the end of the gun player straddles for five and an early position player who I haven't seen raise much at all makes a pretty big raise to $25. It then folds to the hijack who jams for $49 total. Everyone else folds back to us in the big line and we look down at ace jack off. It's one of the only two playable hands we've had in the past 45 minutes, but given the action, I don't expect we're ahead here. I muck our hand pretty quickly, and the original Razor makes the call. They always hit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. They both had, they both had a side. Yeah. Showdown. Both opponents are hesitant to show their hands, implying they both missed the board, but eventually the original Razor flips up ace-king, and we see that our fold was good. Just a few hands later, we pick up pocket fours in the hijack. It folds to the player on our right, a friendly guy I've been chatting with who watches the vlog and he raises it up to $15. I call so we can go set mining, one of the blinds calls, and we go three ways to the flop. It comes down jack high with a pair of sixes. Both players check to us and given that the player on our right raised pre-flop then checked the flop, it's possible our pair is good. I bet out for $25 hoping to take it down. The first player folds but the player on our right calls so we're heads up now. The turn brings the king of diamonds completing the flush. If we weren't behind on the flop already, I'm pretty sure we are now. I imagine he's either got a bigger pair that didn't want to bet on the flop or else an ace-king type hand that just hit the turn. We get checked to again and I easily check this one back here intending to give up. That is, until the river brings a miracle offsuit 4 giving us a boat. Our opponent leads for half pot, $50. We just made our hand, we're really only losing to jacks full or kings full, and I doubt a pair of kings are checking on this flop so I feel like a raise is in order. I make it $150. He only takes about 5 seconds before pushing all in and I've got a feeling we just ran into jacks full given the action. Good pocket jacks. <laughs> Flop it. Uh, I'm too committed. I, I got a call. If you got jacks, you're good. Yeah. I, that river oh, killed me. Oh. <laughs> we only had $109 behind after his shove, meaning we were getting 4 to 1 on the call. Can I ever fold here? Probably. Maybe. I think I assessed the situation well enough, but I still ultimately made the call since I think there are some hands that get overplayed here, like a flush, ace-king, maybe even a six, but I'm curious what you all think. Let me know in the comments below. Finally, we get moved to the 1-3 game. Hopefully we have a little better luck over here. 20 minutes in, we pick up pocket force again. Let's hope this one goes better. We're sitting in the hijack, and there's just a big blind this hand, no small blind. The end of the gun player straddles for $6 and it folds to the middle position player on our right who raises to 20 Like I said, we've got pocket fours again and I call once again to go set mining. We see two more calls and the four of us head to the flop. And it's a pretty good one, or so I hope, as it comes down at king of four eight with two spades. It checks to the player on our right who c bets for half pot, $40. I don't really want to slow play here and get bitten by the flush draw on the board, especially with two players act behind us, so I opt to raise right away, making it $160. The other two players fold and it's back on the original better. After quite a bit of thinking, we eventually get a call. The turn most likely shouldn't change anything when it brings the five of hearts. Our opponent checks to us now and I overbet the pot, pushing all in for $476. He thinks for a good minute or so, asks out loud if we flopped a set, which lets me know that our hand is good, but eventually, he does find a call. The river brings the queen of diamonds, and I show our hand. Thankfully, our set of fours held up this time. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Fifteen minutes later, I straddle under the gun for six dollars and we pick up ace-queen offsuit. 
We see an early position raise to 20 followed by a call. It folds to us and I 3 bet up to $80. Both players call so we've got 3 to the flop. The flop comes down 7-9-3 with 2 diamonds so we miss completely unfortunately. At the time I figured that given the strength we've shown by 3 betting out of position it would look strong to see bet here and I make it $150. I actually think this might be an okay spot to check fold considering the pot is multiway and even if neither player hit the board it does have a handful of draws that could easily call bet here. Unsurprisingly the player behind us pushes all in for $414 total and the third player folds. There's not much more to do here other than fold our hand as well. We pick up no hands for the next 40 minutes until we finally get ace king offsuit in the cutoff. The player across from us in the plus 2 position raises it up to $20. The next player calls and I bump it up big to $100. It folds back to the original raiser who calls and the third player calls as well so we've got 3 to the flop. It comes down 4 jack 3 rainbow so we miss completely but when both players check to us I still continue the story making it $160 in position. Just the first player calls so we're heads up to the turn where we see the 10 of spades. We pick up a little more equity now as any queen would make broadway. I've got no reason to continue betting here though when our opponent checks to us, as even if we had an overpair in this spot, I'd definitely consider checking back here. The river brings the king of clubs, so we managed to hit top pair top kicker. When our opponent checks again, despite our check back on the turn, I'm pretty sure our hand is good here. I decide to push all in with our opponent covered for $322 effective, hoping it looks like a steal given his weak line. Almost two full minutes pass before he finally... calls. I show our hand and it's good. Three hands later, this is the one you've been waiting for. We've got pocket kings in the plus two position. The first two players fold and the player on the right limps in for three dollars. We're obviously raising it up here and I bump it up to 20. It folds to the hijack who three bets to 70. What a spot to be in. Everyone folds back to the limper who cold calls the three bet. There's no way we're not coming back over the top here and after thinking on a bet size I decide on $325 given the amount of interest. The hijack finds a call and that apparently encourages the guy on our right to join as well as he quickly puts in the chips to call. So we've got a massive $979 pot with kings and we haven't even gotten to the flop yet. The flop comes down 4-7 queen with two clubs. Honestly I'm not thrilled about the queen on the flop. With the hijack 3 betting preflop then calling our large 4 bet I think there's a chance we could be up against queens that just flopped a set. When the first player checks to us, I decide to put out a smallish bet making it $250 to see where we're at. Thankfully it does not take long for the hijack to fold and I feel a lot more comfortable about our holding. The player to our right who originally limped in thinks for a good minute or so before eventually pushing all in for $701 total. Seven even on about? Seven oh one. Seven oh one. After getting a count, I realize. Yeah, I mean, I got a call. What's a call? Oh. No more action. Flop a set. Fuck no, I'm about to draw. All right. Uh. Oh, I said. He flips up 8-6, meaning he had nothing but a gut shot with 8 high on the flop and somehow managed to spike his 4 outer on the turn. Ugh, I feel pretty disgusted here. Obviously our small bet made him think we missed and induced a bluff out of him while incredibly far behind. I'm feeling pretty flush in the face and a bit tilted at this run out to be totally honest. Five hands later, we pick up Pocket Queens, another premium. There's a $10 straddle, the player across from us in middle position makes it 25 and the cutoff on our right, who's been calling everything, calls again. The small blind on our left calls before I act and knowing how much interest there is in the hand I put out a pretty large 3 bet for $150. The small blind changes his mind and folds and it folds back to the original raiser who calls. The guy on our right who's been calling everything somehow finds a fold too so we're heads up to the flop. It comes down king jack 4 rainbow. I'm not excited about the king on the flop and when our opponent checks to us I opt to check back here. The turn brings an offsuit jack completing the rainbow so now any king or jack beats us. He checks again and I'm really not inclined to bet here so I check back once more. We see a total brick in the form of a 5 on the river and our opponent makes a small lead for $75. It's such a small bet and we've got a big hand, I've got a call here and our opponent flips up king queen for top pair on the flop. Not excited to see that we're losing this one but we did lose the minimum post flop thankfully.
The very next hand, it folds to the player on the right who raises to $15, and we've got queen five suited in the cutoff. Not a great hand, but now that we know how much he overplays his hands, I call looking to hit something big. The button folds, and the small blind three bets to 50. It folds back to the player on the right who calls, and we've got ourselves in an awkward spot now with a hand I should have just folded in the first place. But we've got position, and we're getting good price, so screw it. I join along to see a flop. The flop comes down deuce king queen with one club, so we flop second pair with a backdoor flush draw. The small blind leads out for $80. The player on the right calls, and I'm not worried about him so much as the small blind. However, we've got second pair, and I expected to see a c-bet regardless of whether our opponent hit the flop, so I call once to see more of the story. The turn brings the ace of clubs, another overcard to our pair, but it does give us the nut flush draw to go along with it. And now both players check to us. I doubt our hand is good, but given the weak line here, we could try to pick up the pot. Even if we're called, we've obviously got a pretty good number of outs. With that, I push all in for basically a pot sized bet, $387. The small blind folds immediately, and now the hijack on our right goes into the tank. He thinks for about two full minutes, and finally, calls. Oh boy, we're gonna need some help, unless he's got eight high again. The river bricks out with an offsuit eight and. I got a queen. English is going to the language. Same. It turns out he's got a bigger pair with his king and the other flush draw on the board. Honestly, I'm surprised it took him as long as it did to call, given the flush draw that he had to go with his pair. Either way, we just got stacked. I rebuy for the last thousand dollars in my pocket with the idea that I want to have as close to as many chips as the guy on my right as possible. We pick up a few small pots, but nothing really noteworthy. We win about $75 with an ace rag hand that hit a flush. $80 with a jack nine hand in the blinds that turned into two pair, and $50 with the jiggities once. Overall, I'm playing a pretty aggressive game, and I've just been waiting to get played back at when we have a legitimate hand. And that's pretty much what happens in the last interesting hand, which comes a few hands later when we straddle for $6 under the gun. The plus one player limps in, and the plus two player raises to 35. We look down and see the jiggities for the second time, just two hands since we had it before. The button and the big blind on the right both call the $35 raise, and now it's on us. We're definitely 3-betting here with all the interest in the hand, and given that we'll be out of position to most of the field, I decide on a pretty large bet, making it $250. It folds back to the original raiser, who 4-bets, making it $600 total. Everyone else folds, even the guy on our right, and now we're in a tough spot. It's either shove or fold here with our stack. On the one hand, I haven't seen this guy get out of line, but on the other hand, I've also been pretty aggressive since rebuying, and I've been anticipating getting played back at. We could be up against an ace-king or ace-queen type hand just as well as we could be up against a bigger pair. After thinking it through, I decide to go for it, jamming our stack into the middle of the pot. We get called quickly and... Uh, what's that? What's that yelm? Yelm? Watch. We flop a set! Uh, like, uh, maybe an and... Our opponent immediately flips over pocket kings for a better set. Oh, wow. What's that? Wow. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14. All right, yeah, he's got me. What's that? Man, uh, that was a pretty bad session. Uh, you know, in terms of the results, uh, not very happy with how that one went. Uh, I feel like the, the play wasn't necessarily bad except for, you know, maybe one or two spots, um, but we just kind of ran into it uh, over and over again. We we lost with set under set twice, uh, all in both times. Uh, granted, one of them was all in pre-flop, but to hit a set and then for it to not be good is uh, pretty unfortunate. And uh, lost that huge pot with pocket kings to the guy who pushed all in with eight high. Uh, nothing but a gut shot and hit his four outer on us uh, in a 2.3, 2.4k pot. So that was pretty uh, vomit inducing. <laughs> uh, not feeling good for that one either. Uh, you know, I was ready for a nice long session. Uh, it ended up being a pretty short session. I think it was about two to two and a half hours in all. Uh, left early when we ran out of money. We lost our $2,000 in that amount of time, unfortunately, and uh, left with nothing. So not a great session. Um, I didn't capture a screenshot from my bankroll tracking app, but um, at our peak, we were sitting at about 20.5K, and at the moment, we're sitting at about 17.5, 17.6K. So uh, a little bit down from the, the peak of where our bankroll was, but 
uh, gonna work our way back up hopefully gonna keep at it um, spoiler alert next week's episode is gonna be insane so tune back in uh, but in the meantime thanks for watching hit the like and subscribe button even though it was a rough session uh, your like and subscribes help the channel and uh, leave a comment I like to interact with you guys so leave a comment down below I'll get back to you and uh, otherwise I'll see you on the next one take care guys